Some time ago, I made a video about my top three Nordic gear picks from each country, and it seems to have become one of my most popular videos so far. To bring my audience more content like this, I attended Eurosatory in Paris, where Western military companies showcased their new equipment in June of this year. Some of this equipment is not past the testing phase yet. Some of it was delivered this year or last, and some of it is coming to an army near you very soon. As we discussed in my other video, the Nordics produce a lot of quality kit. Denmark has a growing radar, drone, and software scene. Norway is becoming a specialist in drones and air defense. Sweden is a powerhouse in everything, from armored fighting vehicles to fighter jets. And Finland seems to be getting better and better at making artillery, armored vehicles, and specialist drones. Without further delay, let's get into it. This time we're going to start with Finland. Likely, the item that got me most excited at the exhibition was the awesome-looking, famous armored all-terrain vehicle produced by Patria. The product video really doesn't do it justice. It is like a mix between a futuristic snow car and a tank. It has active EMP emitters to take down drones. It's got onboard drone systems, remote turret systems, a hybrid engine for creeping up on enemies, and active camouflage. It is likely the perfect ATV for Norway, Sweden, Finland, and the Baltic states. Second on my list for Finland is the new wheeled self-propelled artillery system, which integrates the gun from the 155 K98 howitzer onto a Sisu truck. This development was inspired by the success of the French Caesar and Swedish archer self-propelled guns in Ukraine, highlighting the critical role of mobility in modern warfare. Patria, with a strong background in artillery production, originally developed the 155 K98 howitzer in the 1990s, while an earlier proposal for a domestic artillery system was rejected in favor of the K9 Thunder. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine has sparked renewed interest in a more cost-effective, locally produced system. Testing of the new prototype is expected to begin this winter. One thing is certain, Finland is likely the country in Europe besides Ukraine who has the biggest expertise in both the use and production of artillery, and by all accounts, still have the biggest artillery reserve among European NATO nations. Before we move on with the third pick from Finland, I'd love it if you smash that like button. It helps me compete in a sea of many different channels. And if you think I've totally missed the plot with my top three from Finland, please let me know in the comments. For my third pick for Finland, it was a battle between many different items. On one hand, I would have loved to put the new Steel Eagle Claymore drone or the Patria Nemo naval container system in my third spot. But I think it will have to be the Nordic Drone Sky Drone series. As we've seen in Ukraine, heavy hectocopter drones like the Sky Drone 7 is extremely valuable. Finland is onto something with this long-lasting, cold-resistant version. And with some tweaking in actual conflict, it could become one of the mainstays of NATO armies. With a giant like Patria in their midst, there are plenty of items that likely could have gone into my top three. So for my honorable mentions, I'll put in Lapua's new 50 caliber ammunition, Patria's unmanned ground drone, and Insta's new RC2 software. On another day, these could all have been in my top three. Next, we move on to Sweden. What can I say? I envy Sweden's military complex's ability to innovate. This list could likely be 10 items long, and I'd just be scratching the surface. Saab's innovations alone could likely finish my top three here, but I'll try to diversify. Out of all the wonderful Swedish kit I got to see at the exhibition, one thing stood out. The CV-90's new model. The CV-90 Mark IV is a fifth-generation, combat-proven infantry fighting vehicle that combines enhanced battlefield speed and agility with a new electronic architecture for future upgrades. Building on over two decades of top-tier mobility and survivability, the Mark IV now boasts a 1,000-horsepower engine, upgraded heavy-duty transmission, and an increased weight capacity from 35 to 38 tons, allowing for three extra tons of payload. It also introduces the first qualified active protection system in a Western IFV new D-Series turrets, active damping for faster terrain navigation, and advanced electronics for future technology integration. Even more exciting is that the Mark IV will start arriving in Ukraine next year. It'll be by far the most advanced IFV on the battlefield. 
For number two on my list, I'm going to go with the brand spanking new RBS-15 Mark IV, now called Gugnir after one of Odin's pet ravens. With its improved range of 300 kilometers, non-jammable technology, and obstacle avoiding targeting system, this missile is as deadly as its Norwegian counterpart, the Naval Strike Missile. It's launchable from land, sea, and air, and will be one of the more high-tech missiles in the NATO arsenal. With its high precision and adaptability, the RBS-15 Mark IV strengthens the defense capabilities of any naval fleet or coastal defense system. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to make this all about Saab, but it's hard to leave out Saab's new short-range air defense system in this list. The newest version of this system is a highly adaptable solution designed to protect against a wide range of aerial threats, including drones, helicopters, and low-flying aircraft. Combining advanced radar and missile technology, it provides quick reaction times and high mobility, making it ideal for defending mobile units and critical infrastructure. The system integrates Saab's Giraffe 1X radar for 360-degree coverage and the RBS-70 missile system, which is renowned for its precision and ability to engage targets in complex environments. Better yet, you can mount both systems on one truck, making it fast-moving, deadly, and incredibly versatile. As for honorable mentions for Sweden, the list could be long. The Barracuda Camouflage, Saab Global Eye, and Aimpoint's new Acro Optic Red Sight for anti-drone shotgun handling will have to be my picks. The Acro S2 is proving quite the anti-drone fighter, and it's starting to become a technology infantry squads will be equipped with for anti-FPV purposes moving forward. Next up, Denmark. While not as big as its neighbors when it comes to military technology, Things are really starting to heat up in the Danish market. Several small Danish drone producers are pumping out some very promising products. And you can't really go far without talking about the new modular patrol ships that Denmark is creating. First on the list for me from Denmark will have to be the Ammonix Wing drone. With its long-range innovative flight technology and proven performance, I expect that this drone could be a feasible cost-effective option for European nations when it comes to high-altitude surveillance. It has a shorter takeoff than most fixed-wing drones and augmented lift capabilities, which requires less fuel and power to take off. Its technology allows a user to tether it to an object, allowing it to loiter with almost zero fuel use. If the team over at Ammonix can get this drone to market fast, we'll likely see the founding of a solid Danish defense story. Number two from Denmark has to be an item from Denmark's likely biggest defense company, the Skanta 6002 series now upgraded to deal with the modern advent of drone warfare. It is an advanced radar system developed by Terma, designed for superior surface and air surveillance, widely used in both naval and coastal applications. The Skanda 6002 provides high-resolution detection and tracking of small and fast-moving targets, such as drones, boats, and low-flying aircraft, even in challenging weather conditions. It operates with a solid-state design, ensuring reliable performance and low maintenance requirements. The radar's ability to integrate with other systems makes it a versatile solution for enhancing situational awareness in critical environments like ports, offshore platforms, and military installations. If I made this video a year from now, I'd likely start talking about the new 155mm artillery rounds coming out of Jutland as my third pick, but we're still a ways off that coming into fruition. So I'll have to go with another small, yet extremely promising Danish drone company as my third pick, namely Nordic Wing and their Astero ISR. Denmark seems to be developing into a small powerhouse when it comes to fixed wing drones, likely due to their extensive experience with being the Nordic base for airlines for decades, as well as a leading producer for the F-16 and F-35 program. The Astero, a bit like the Ammonix Wing, is extremely durable very high-tech and brings innovation that makes it outlast most of the current fixed-wing drones on the market in airtime. I'm surprised that it hasn't got more publicity, but I'm sure that with the right focus and capability from the producers, we'll see this company start to take their fair market share or be bought by a bigger company soon. As for my honorable mentions for Denmark, I'll go with the innovative, mind-sweeping technology from Hendrickson called Hemless. The proposed new modular patrol ships 
currently being planned by the Danish Navy, and lastly the next generation of Center M short-range air defense radars from Weibel. Next, we come to Norway. The country has steadily worked its way to the top of several defense industries. Autonomous systems, air defense, artillery and rocket munitions are Norway's specialties. Missiles and artillery grenades account for nearly 50% of all of Norway's military exports, with air defenses making up a large part of the rest. The first pick for Norway isn't even a competition. The Nomad system recently unveiled by Kongsberg flat out takes the first spot. Nomads is a cutting-edge, highly mobile air defense solution designed to protect military units and critical infrastructure from a variety of airborne threats, including aircraft, drones and missiles. Building on Kongsberg's incredible track record with NASAMS, it is showing very promising results. Nomads combines advanced sensors, radar systems and missile launches in a compact, mobile platform that can be rapidly deployed to any location. What makes this system special is its ability to fire sidewinders, making it a really cost-effective alternative to the more costly air defense systems out there. Next on Norway's list will have to be NAMO's new ramjet technology, meaning that their propelled 155mm artillery shells will now be able to travel over 150 kilometers, making them longer range than most of the short-range missiles on the market. Better yet, they're said to be able to work in most NATO artillery pieces, giving countries like Ukraine an edge unlike any modern howitzer could. The proof is in the numbers. And if you stick one of these shells in, for example, an archer, the archer can unload its whole magazine and be several kilometers down the road before the shells impact their target. A real Norwegian game changer. Third on Norway's list is going to be the NASAM's long range system, currently being built and tested by Kongsberg. Norway has a gem with the NASAM system and together with the Patriot, there are few other systems that have proven as effective at taking down almost anything Russia can throw at Ukraine. Kongsberg is currently working on creating a competitor for the Patriot, which will be able to strike planes and aerial threats much further out than the current system, which should in turn give Europe a credible long-range alternative to the Patriot. The way Kongsberg is pumping out incredible air defense systems, we're likely looking at yet another success story for Norway in this new up-and-coming system. As for my honorable mentions for Norway, there's a lot that competes for the spot. Fleur Teledyne's new Black Recon fitted with a lot of the same incredible technology that I covered in my recent video on the Black Hornet drone in Ukraine will have to be here. The same with Kongsberg's Hugen Endurance unmanned water drone. And to finish it off, I'll go with the hugely underrated new Brynja woolen underwear, which powers the best Arctic special operators from Sweden, Norway and Finland. I received a set of the new model from a friend just last week, and I must say, hats off to Norway for your thermal underwear. It keeps me warm on wet days at the range from September to May. I'm going to stop talking about my underwear now and move on to the conclusion. In short, the Nordics seem to be pumping out in particular small drone companies like never before. Sweden, Norway and Finland are doing what they do best, which is heavy equipment sprinkled in with some high-tech anti-air assets, while Denmark is steadily working on becoming a drone specialist. Only time will tell if they succeed, but from what I've seen, they're getting very close to some real breakthroughs. If you liked this video, I'd be honored if you gave it a big thumbs up and a comment. It helps me compete with other channels out there. Have a great weekend, folks.